Hello Chic lovers! Fragmentation is an optional functionality of Chic. It can be used when the Chic compression packet is too large for the transport network. In that case, the compressed packet will be cut in several pieces that will be reunified at the other end. To manage this process, fragments are marked with a rule ID. This rule ID helps the receiver determine how to handle incoming data. When data arrives, the receiver checks the rule ID. Based on this ID, the receiver can determine whether the incoming data is a complete chic packet that can be sent directly to decompression, or if it's a fragment that needs to be reassembled with other fragments before decompression. This system allows for efficient handling of both fragmented and non-fragmented chic packets within the same framework. Remember, Chic employs a binary tree structure for rule IDs, combining compression and fragmentation rules. Now, let's revisit how the compression and fragmentation processes work together. When compression occurs, it creates what we call a Chic compressed message. This message consists of a rule ID, compression residues, and the payload. It's important to note that at this stage, there's no padding added. This means the sheet compressed message isn't neatly aligned, and its length can be any number of bits. This raw state is what gets passed on to the fragmentation process. At this point, we have a long binary sequence without any inherent structure. To transmit this information to the receiver, we use fragments. These fragments act as carriers for the data and can be much smaller than the original sequence. They're the building blocks we use to send our fragmentation message across the network. Let's break down the fragmentation process. Each fragment starts with a rule ID, which points to a set of fragmentation parameters. The structure and size of these fragmentation parameters can vary depending on the specific rule, but for now, let's keep things general and not dive too deep into the details. After the parameters, we fill the fragment with as many bits as possible from our original message. These fragments don't overlap, and we keep sending them until we've transmitted all the bits from the original message. The last fragment is a bit special. It might include some padding to fill it up completely, but more importantly, it contains a special field called VRCS, or Reassembly Check Sequence. This helps ensure everything can be put back together correctly at the other end. The redundancy check sequence, or RCS, is a well-established technique in telecommunications. It's essentially the same as the cyclic redundancy check, CRC, used in Ethernet protocols. This method is highly effective, capable of reliably detecting both lost data fragments and fragments that arrive out of sequence. The CRC encompasses all data within the fragments, including the padding bits. This comprehensive coverage is necessary because at this stage, the receiver cannot differentiate between the actual payload and the padding information. One more thing, RCS, with a CRC-based mechanism, authorize UDP checksums to be elided during compression because it provides a more robust error detection covering both the payload and heater fields. This video covered the fundamental concepts of fragmentation. Our next videos will explore the various fragmentation techniques in depth provided by Sheik in RFC 8724. We'll also explore the parameters that can be incorporated into both the rule and the fragmentation header.